Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries in John 8, 12. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. It's going to be part two of uh, the wedding. And we're going to take a look at John chapter two. There's, you know, it's only been recently that I really saw how much symbolism was in this. So there might be a part three. All right, John chapter two, verse one. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Now, I've had people say that this is actually the, the wedding of Jesus. And that he married Mary Magdalene and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it doesn't say he was Jesus was a groom. It says he was called. And it's disciples to the marriage. They were called to the marriage. It wasn't their marriage. Doesn't say who the bride was. Doesn't say who the groom was. Mary Magdalene's not even mentioned here. And uh, there's people tell you that, well, yeah, Mary and G Mary Magdalene and Jesus got married and they had kids. And uh, yeah, I don't think so. You know all those times that the Bible says, and so and so begat. And so and so begat, and they begat, and they begat, and they begat. Well, if Jesus had children, don't you think it would be mentioned in the Bible about, and Jesus begat? Uh, I don't know how that came about, you know, Jesus marrying Mary Magdalene, but I don't believe a word of it. But. There's people that do, and yeah, if you want to believe that, that's fine. But uh, whatever. All right, so there was a marriage in Cana, Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Huh, okay. Now, if you want to know about something in the Bible, an event, or a phrase, or a word, it is oftentimes very useful to find the first time that event occurs in scriptures. So where is the first wedding in the Bible? Oh, I bet you I know where it's at. Genesis. Uh, can you say Adam and Eve? Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to Genesis 2, verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. So he formed his body out of the dust of the ground, breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And if you look up that word breathed and breath, wind, uh, in, especially in the New Testament, comes from the word pneuma, which means uh, uh, sometimes it's wind, breath, uh, but it also has reference to spirit. And the Hebrew has similar meanings. So God formed man, his body, out of the dust of the earth, breathed into him the spirit, and man became a living soul. So man has a body, a soul, and a spirit. And until he had the spirit, he 
wasn't, he, you know, he didn't become a living soul. A living soul with a body. So, all right, let's skip down to verse 15. And Lord God took the man and put him into the Garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, it's funny, you know, uh, how do you spell devil? You just take the word evil and you put a D in front of it, right? A capital D. Devil. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. What do they say in an airplane? Don't call me surely. Yeah. So, and the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Uh, aardvark. Zebra. Hippopotamus. Or, yeah, well, you know. Platypus. Uh, yeah. And Adam gave names to all the cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam, there was not found an helpmeet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. What do we call that today? Uh, let's see. When a doctor does it, uh, they call it uh, administering anesthesia, right? Oh, yeah. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs, a rib, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib, which the Lord God had taken from man, made he a woman, and brought her unto the man. So is this... Uh, is she basically a clone, a female, you know, you got a, a male and a female, but, you know, they're clones, basically, DNA, you know, because every, I guess, uh, when you start studying genetics, not that I'm an expert in it, I took biology in college, uh, depending upon you, you know, or an X or a Y chromosome or whatever, it becomes male or female. So, and the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of the man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother. We don't want no mama boys. You know, be a husband, be a man. We don't want no mama boys. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. I imagine they were, you know, without sin. Isn't that funny? What does Christ give uh, people in Revelation? Uh, white robes washed in what? His blood, right? I hope you know what I'm talking about. Now, keep that in mind. Where did the Lord take the rib from his side not from the foot 
because he didn't want her to him to Adam to walk all over her, not from the head. He didn't want her uh, her to be his ruler, to be a ruler over him. No, from the side. And some would say, well, you know, it's took took it from the side so he could always uh, have her by his, his side, close to his heart, and under his arms for protection. Well, that's what a marriage is supposed to be. Anyways, wish I had learned that when I was uh, in my 20s, but uh, I was an idiot. So, what can I tell you? So, in my book, this seems like to be the first wedding. Or marriage, I guess you could say. But, uh, you know, you think about it. He took her out of his side. Keep that in mind, because that's going to be mentioned later. Right out of the side. That's where his bride came from. The bride came out of his side. Oh, yeah. Now, I'm going to take a little detour here. I am of the opinion that we existed in some torrid, you know, our souls existed prior to us uh, getting our bodies. And I'm just going to throw that out there and you can do with it whatever you want. But, uh, and I believe we existed in some form prior to Satan uh, trying to overthrow God in the war in heaven and trying to kill God. Not a very good um, game plan if you ask me, but hey, what do I know? So, Genesis 1, verse 26. And God said, Let us, plural, let us make man in our image. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, right? Some actually will tell you, oh yeah, that means he was talking to the angels. But nowhere does it mention the angels having any part in creation. Zero. But it does mention in that Jesus created all things. And Christ is not the Father. I mean, let's face it, Christ in the flesh prayed to the Father. And if you can figure that one out, let me know, because I, I mean, I, I can show you the verses, but uh, do I understand it perfectly? No. No, I absolutely do not. I mean, it's uh, a lot of details there. So, what can I tell you? All right, so here's the deal. Let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them them who man mankind let them have dominion dominate domination control you know these little uh, greenies running around uh you know these eco eco ecological people Oh, it's terrible for people to have, you know, uh, have dogs and cats and, you know, to be eating meat because, you know, they'll try to convince you animals have souls. They, maybe they do, but right here it says, let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over everything every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. Now, wait a minute. 
if uh, the woman hadn't come out of Adam yet, because that's in the next chapter, chapter 2, where's this male and female? Uh, there are people that'll read, have you read this, and they'll tell you, well, you know, there was a world before this world. There was another Earth age, and, you know, God created all these things, and then I guess Satan rebelled, and the, everything was destroyed, then God had to start all over. Uh, there is a one or two verses that are kind of vague. Maybe I should show you. Uh, in Re Genesis 1 and verse 2, it says, And the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. So, in Jeremiah 4.23, we read, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens... And they had no light. So they'll use this to say, well, you know, there was an age before the earth, and I don't know. So let's take a look at something else. In Jeremiah 1, in verse 5, the Lord declares, Before I formed thee in the belly, before Jeremiah had a body, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Before Jeremiah was even born, God sanctified him, set him apart, and ordained him to be a prophet. Before he was even born. How could the Lord know you before you're even born? Well, some people will say, well, you know, he just knows everything. Well, I mean, I'm not going to argue that. But the thing is, did perhaps we exist in some sort of form, uh, spiritual form before we had a body? I, that's my theory. And if you don't believe it, that's okay. You know, I mean, I don't know everything. I mean, Jesus didn't even know what day he was going to come back. He said, not the angels in heaven, nor he didn't know, and the angels in heaven didn't know. Only the Father knew. So if there's something that Jesus doesn't know, you better believe there's going to be things, plural, that I don't know. But I think we existed in some sort of form prior to the fall of Satan. And some people will say, well, you know, uh, Satan's still in heaven and he doesn't get thrown out of heaven until the book of Revelation, which is the end time stuff. A lot of it is, not all of it. Uh, and then they'll point to Job chapter 1 where he presents himself to the Lord. Say, see, uh, Satan still has access to heaven. But it doesn't say that uh, they're in heaven. It just says he presented himself to the Lord. Maybe they were there on earth. I mean, you know, you're kind of assuming that he's up in heaven. But it doesn't say he's in heaven. It doesn't say he's on earth either. So, personally, I think... Somewhere between Genesis 1 and Genesis 3, Satan rebelled, was cast out, and he became, I guess, you know, the tree of good and evil. I mean, let's face it, Jesus even said that uh, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now, he said that almost you know, almost 2,000 years ago. I beheld. You know, past tense. 
So that's my that's my theory. And you know, I'm not right about everything. So but that's just my guess. So let's go back to John chapter two. Well, let's read, let's start from the beginning. John 2, verse 1. And the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now, why would they say the third day? Uh, I'm not sure I have an answer to that. But if we go to Genesis 1, verse 9, and God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. And God saw that it was good. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, and herb yielding seed after his kind, and the tree yielding fruit, whose seed was in itself after his kind, and God saw that it was good. And the evening and the morning were the third day. I don't know if that has anything to do with the wedding, but, you know, I'm just throwing that out there. All right, so, back to John. And the third day there was a marriage in Canaan of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus was called and his disciples to the marriage. Ah, okay. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine. Uh, my guess is, well, you know, they had some wine. But I, I'm guessing they have, they'd ran out. And I'll show you that later. So they have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? Mine hour is not yet come. Huh. Why would Jesus make a statement like that? Why? Think about the Last Supper, because we're going to go there. We're going to go to the Last Supper. The wine. Remember? The wine. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Whatever he says to do, you guys do it. Now, you got to realize something. Mary uh, knew what kind of a child Christ was. Matter of fact, let's take a look at that. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to Matthew... One. And verse 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ, and Christ is a title, it means mis anointed or, mis you know, anointed. It's not his name. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise, when as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph... Uh, they're engaged to be married. That's what espoused means. Before they came together, you know, before, before they consummated the, the marriage, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away priv privily, privately. You know, back in the Old Testament days, if a woman got married before she got, well, if a woman was spoused to a, a guy and got pregnant before she was married, uh, 
it's time to uh, get stoned, right? And uh, no, they didn't bring out the bong. So, verse 20. But while he, Joseph, thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David. Now remember, David was of the tribe of Judah. People keep telling me, oh no, Jesus was of the tribe of Joseph. Where is that in the Bible? I always ask them that and they can't show me. Joseph, thou son of David. Well, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Yeshua HaMashiach. No, 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 no. And thou shalt call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Not the whole world. His people. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And that is in the book of Isaiah. And your modern Bibles will say, oh, no, 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 that's that word virgin there. It just means young woman. Uh, well, I think there was a, I forget her name, but there was a woman down in South America. She got pregnant. I think she was five. Uh, and I don't think that was a virgin birth. I think she had somebody's help. I don't know who in the world would want to do that to a five-year-old, but uh, there are those in the world. If I'd have been the father, uh, there would have been a body probably buried somewhere. But, hey, that's just me, you know. Um, I forget her name. You can look it up on uh, youngest youngest girl to give birth. I think she lives in Peru. Uh, I checked it a few years ago, and she was still alive. I think it was in the late 30s. She might be dead by now. I don't know. Um, but all the modern Bibles say, young woman. Is five, and, five years old young enough for you to give, you know? No. My Bible says virgin. That's why I say use the King James. Oh, you're in that King James only cult. You better believe it, boy. If you don't like it, go use your NIV. Or the Living Bible. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. See, original sin didn't touch Christ. Then Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. And he knew her not till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name... Yeshua HaMashiach! No, Jesus. All right, let's go to Luke chapter 1, verse 26. Uh, I've covered some of this material in previous studies, but uh, you'll when I tie everything up, you'll kind of understand why. All right, Luke 1, 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Now remember, uh, Elizabeth is already with child. I pointed that out in the previous study. 
Uh, John was about six months older in the flesh than Christ. All right, and in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Now, here it is. The Bible says Gabriel was sent from God. All right. I mean, I've actually had people deny that, uh, I, you know, you tell them, oh, Gabriel named Jesus, Jesus. Oh, well, well Gabriel named, named Jesus, Jesus by himself. God didn't do it. You know, this is the kind of idiocy that you run into. I mean, I, I don't believe these are... Uh, I think they're uh, based over in the Middle East. Yeah. Yeah, they're, I, think th I think these uh, trolls are based over in the Middle East. And I don't think they're Arabic either. You know, and they want you to use Yeshua. You know who Yeshua is? Rabbi Schneerson. He died a number of years ago, and they're still waiting for him to come up from the grave. Uh, they've been waiting a little while, so yeah, I think they're going to have to wait a little while longer. I know when he's coming back. The second resurrection, that's when he's coming back. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. To a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. Now remember, Mary was a relative of Elizabeth who had John the Baptist, and Elizabeth and Mary were of the tribe of Levi. So by the flesh, Christ was of the tribe of Levi by his mother, and the tribe of Judah by his daddy, which Neither one of them were mother or father, but, you know, but I digress. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at this saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. A salutation, that's, you know, it's a greeting. What kind of a greeting is this? And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Yeshua HaMashiach. Uh, sorry, that's the, uh, that's probably the uh, complete Jewish Bible uh, translation mistranslation no no and shalt call his name jesus you know everybody uses this yeshua is denying the king james bible they're denying the bible they're denying the greek new testament you know if they want to run to you know who ish fables let them let, their, let them worship their Messiah when he comes. Because he comes before Christ. I wish somebody would tell that to the pre-tribbers. The false Messiah comes first, people. The false Messiah comes first. No, he doesn't. Jesus comes before then. Where's that in the Bible? Well, my pastor said, well, I don't care what your pastor says. You know, John Hagee says uh, the, the you-know-whos uh, don't need Jesus and they get saved. Thus making Jesus a liar. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Oh, the you-know-whos have got a back door. Well, yeah, a back door to hell maybe.
And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. Now, imagine Mary. Mary knows all this. Okay? Mary knows all this. You better believe she was paying special attention to Christ the whole time he was growing up. He shall be great and shall be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? That's a legitimate question. You know, there's a big difference between saying, oh, how is this going to come to pass? And saying, oh, that's impossible. I'm too old or, you know, I haven't been with a man, so this can't happen. Angel, don't you even understand simple biology? I have to have a man to, you know, have a baby. She's not saying that. She's saying, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? Probably very humble. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing, therefore also that holy thing shall, which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Huh. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age, and this is the sixth month with her, who was called barren. See, Elizabeth had John the Baptist, who was six months older than Christ. Verse 37. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word, and the angel departed from her. So Mary was perfectly willing to accept this. And she probably asked the Lord to use her in any way, you know. But uh, now there are, I actually saw a video, I think it was yesterday, saying that, oh, God raped Mary. What? Or sexually abused her. Like, really? Really? You know, God's got a God's got a place for people that uh, spin that kind of filth. So I think what I'm going to do is make this the end of part two, and then we're going to go do the um, the wedding and how all this stuff ties into the wedding. You know, you had a first wedding. And then there's going to be a wedding in heaven. Think about it. The, uh, the wedding supper of the Lamb. And that's where I'm going to get through. But I, I don't want to make this uh, real long. And besides, uh, I got to go shopping. I got some things I got to do. And uh, yeah, so you know how that goes. But... We'll be back. All right, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen.